And I used to love to go with him to work because they had all the rubber monster suits like lining the stairs up into the booth. Um, and at the end of this particular session, the director's like, hey, we need a kid's voice. And my dad's like, he's a kid, throw him in the booth. And uh, I became a voice actor. Yay, child labor. Woohoo! So since then, I, I've been really fortunate with some of the roles I've, I've been able to play. Um, you might know me as Aaron Yeager in Attack on Titan, um, Kirito in Sword Art Online, uh, Meliodas in yes. Seven Deadly Sins, awesome cosplay, um, and Wikipedia definitely knows the rest. Um, I, I use that all the time. Like, wait, did I do that? Oh yeah, I did. Um, so yeah, I've, I've had an awesome weekend out here. What about you guys? Um, was anyone at the SAO Summer Festival yesterday? Yeah, that was a really fun panel. Um, there was like seven minutes of bloopers that they showed. Um, and that was like the edited down version. Um, there's definitely a lot of those floating around. Um, so today, um, I'm just gonna kind of chat about what you guys want to chat about. We'll just kind of like hang out and talk about anime or whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, so I'll just kind of like bounce it around. We can kind of keep it laid back. Like we don't have to go to a mic and just throw your hand up and um, I'll just jump around and answer some questions. Yeah. My favorite board game? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I like Monopoly. I do. It's fun. Um, my wife always beats me though. She's really good. Um, I also like Risk. It's another one. I, I mean, I hope I don't play anyone because I'll tell you my secret tactic. I always take Australia first. Go for the little country. Do, do people not play Risk anymore? Are you guys like, I'm dating myself. Um, <laughs> um, what about you? What's your favorite board game? Uh, I actually am the president of the board game club at my college. So you play like legit like yes. game board gaming. I have a game called Bloomhaven that's like 20 pounds. Wow. The session is over like multiple hours long. Yeah. I mean, that's intense. I've never played like those really intense like board games, but... <laughs> you ball and you ball, now, you're, now you're hooked? I was like driving around, there was Sunday, I was bored, so I, I started driving around, checking out like the local sites and see, and I walk into a board game shop. Yeah. And I was like, this is my place! <laughs> yeah. All I have to do is little boxes, I don't know, it's like skill grabbers. Yeah, that's awesome when that happens. I picked up one of those, and like, I played with them, and I was like, this, this is amazing. This is ten times better than Monopoly. <laughs> nice. And then, uh, yeah, just from there into, uh, I've, I've seen people at conventions like like gaming and I'm, I'm always so tempted to sit down and just like jump in. I'm just nervous like that's gonna happen to me and I'll just be like, this is way better than Monopoly and then they'll never see me again. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, we'll kind of work our way over here, so yeah. Yeah, go for it. You gotta be nice and loud. Yeah. Oh, I, how's, the, how's um, your experience with the Attack of Titan Season 3 going? Really good so far. I mean, not um, so. Uh, if you guys went to the theater and saw like the season two recap, who saw that? So you guys got like a sneak peek on the first episode. Um, we recorded that like a month before we were supposed to, which was really cool, knowing that that was coming. 
Um, but I just started recording again. Uh, and does anyone know the, the release date? The funny thing about like people come up, they're like, next, next weekend, is when, uh, uh, next weekend, Tsunami? Yeah, yeah awesome. Okay, because people always come up to, to voice actors. I see this all the time. Like, when is show coming out? When is this? season two of this? Season three of this? And we don't know anything. Like, they don't tell us anything because they know we talk for a living and will probably say the wrong thing, so they just leave us in the dark. So I typically find out about, like, releases from when I'm on a panel or from online or from, like, streaming on Unlock. That's when, that's when I find out about stuff, so, um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep jumping over here and then I'll come back to this side, yeah. You know, Shami is in the building. <laughs> I was, I was on a, and this is what will happen to you. I'll, I'll get a question, I'll tell a story that takes you way over here, and then I'll find my way back to the answer of the question. This is gonna keep happening. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep avoiding this as long as I can. Um, so I was on a panel uh, at another convention called SAC Anime, and there were a bunch of the girls that are in SAO. Uh, so Jeremy was there, uh, Cassandra was there, Michelle Ruff was there, and somebody brought them a bag of Starburst. I was literally getting Starburst streamed the entire panel because someone asked that same question. They're like, which of the girls do you choose? I'm like, how could you do that to me? <laughs> True, but both of those characters live inside my brain and they're both fighting with each other. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to pick between, you know, trying to pick favorites. Um, I, I think both of those characters have a lot of great qualities. Um, I have a, a two-year-old daughter, and I love the concept of a, a female superhero uh, like Ladybug. Um, I, I love that, that she's just starting to watch the show, and I'm excited for her to kind of get into it more. Um, so I, I love that concept, and uh, obviously I'm a huge fan of Sword Art Online also. Um, I, uh, I think the Mother's Rosario arc was one of my favorite arcs. Um, and I love that the show focused back onto Asuna. So, I'll just avoid, avoid the question. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, and you chose that with both Todd and I at the con, so. <sighs> Put us in a tough spot. Um, yes. Oh, last year there was a panel just like this. And uh, you said you hadn't seen Sword Art Online of Rich. Have you since then? Still haven't. Um, <laughs> yep. um, I'm, I'm actually waiting for the perfect moment because I want to stream my reaction, but I want to do it in a certain way. Um, and, okay, uh, has everyone heard of Unlocked? No, what's that? Uh, a few. <laughs> so Unlocked is a mobile app that I'm the co-founder of. It's a, a streaming app. Uh, platform, and um, it's really cool, it connects actors and voice actors and cosplayers and artists and all sorts of folks to people around the world. Um, and I really want to stream myself reacting to it on Unlocked, but I'm waiting for a new feature to come, which is coming pretty soon, hopefully. Um, so I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. Um, Speaking of Unlock, this will be fun. Uh, we actually have someone here, his name is Graham, and he is the head of the Unlocked Anime Book Club. Graham, do you want to come up here and chat a little bit? Yeah, come on up. This is really fun. Like, Graham and I have only talked online and through the app, and we're finally getting to meet in person, and we've been trying to, like, hang out the whole weekend. What's up, man? Good to see you. Grab a mic. Um, we've been trying to hang out the whole weekend, and this is the only opportunity I have to like hang out with him. So actually, I've met and, and become friends with a lot of people on stage in front of a crowd. Um, like the first time I really got to hang out with Trina Nishimura, who plays Mikasa in Attack on Titan, was at Supernova in Australia. Because when we record, it's one person in the booth at a time, and we try to make it sound like we're talking to each other, even, even though it's just someone in a soundproof booth 
screaming like a crazy person. Um, so, yeah, man, how's your con going? God, Otakon's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you been to Otakon before? Yes, this is my third year here. Uh, I was here at the last year's in Baltimore, and what, it's been in D.C. for now, the second year? Yeah. 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 The last time I was at Otakon, it was still in Baltimore also. So I, I've, been meaning, I've been meaning to ask a lot of the, uh, like the, the guests and stuff that have come over multiple years. Like, do you like the Baltimore area better or the D.C. area? What's been... was it too long ago to remember? Or? You know, I, I, I was able to go out and explore a little more in Baltimore. In D.C., I haven't made it very far. Like, I've just been trying to meet as many people as possible, and I feel like at a convention like this, there's just never enough time. So I've, I've really been trying to like stick at the convention and meet as many people as I can. Um, well, when the convention is this big, like this definitely feels bigger than the Baltimore Convention Center. Like, yeah, it's like too scary stuff. It is. It is. I mean, like I said, you get lost in the pretty easily. I mean, I, I I've definitely been lost the entire weekend. Like, uh, uh, if if there's two choices, I will always pick the wrong way to turn. Like, undoubtedly, we'll we'll turn the wrong way. Um, so, Brent, um, I want you to tell uh, everybody about the Anime Book Club. Well, so, jeez, I mean, like, so actually, I have a fun, this, this is a story, I meant to ask you actually this, um, yeah. so, it, it was about like a year ago, when Unlock was first being picked up, and they were, like, this whole idea, that like, a lot of the, 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 the VAs and stuff that were part of Unlocked were doing their own shows, like, I know, like, Cassandra stuff, Cassandra tries, where she eats, like, Japanese food, and, yep. uh, Eric Kimmermer did, like, pros and cons, pros and cons, yep, and then I was like, hey, I, I, I have an idea, I, I can, I, can I do a show where, like, we just talk about anime? <laughs> And then we, I know we, we sat down and we worked through like the idea, the format, and all that stuff. And I remember the first for the first episode, I was like, "Hey, let's watch Seven Deadly Sins." I'm like, "It's a really great show. We have all these like, amazing voice actors and stuff that worked on it." And we're in the video. I go down the list. I'm like, "We have Erica Harlicker. We have Max Middleman. We have Eric Kimmer. We have Bryce Kickenbrook." <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, when I submitted that video, I remember like corresponding with you guys over unlocked, and you'd be like, "Yeah, like yeah, the video looked pretty good. Like a couple of little small things here." It's like, also, uh, make sure you uh, pronounce the the voice actors their name right. And I'm like, "Dead, Dead Trust, like Erica Harlicker. I'm so sorry. I'll go back and fix that." And then like, now you mispronounced Bryce's name. Funny thing is, he had no idea he was talking to me. <laughs> Thing, post fact, I knew it was either you or David. Yep. Like, if that was Bryce, I just made a, an ass of myself <laughs> in front of Bryce. It happens all the time. Jeremy said someone came up and asked her, how do you like working with Bryce Paperback? <laughs> <laughs> all the time it happens. So, dude, is that a common thing? I feel like it's... it's I feel like an idiot for messing up your <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super common. It is? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I love it. That's a, that's a huge compliment. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, one thing I love about your concept of, of the anime book club, like it's it's very similar to like a regular book club where you know every couple weeks, you know, people take a book or with the anime book club, they, they watch a show over two weeks, and then they all come together and hang out and talk about the show and kind of like talk about certain um, questions, like they always have three sort of talking points. And then the cool thing about associating it with Unlocked is we have all the voice actors on there, so we bring a voice actor who worked on the show to do like a QA and a and talk specifically about their experience on the show, and it's just gone so well. It's been so fun. Because we got you and Eric Kimmerer for Seven Deadly Sins, yep. we got Trina for uh, Steins Gate, Chris Patton for Ghost Stories, David Vincent for Kill a Kill. It was, it's been a lot of fun. If y'all are on Facebook, Check out the unlock page. The videos are all there. I know Michelle's very kindly gone through and tagged all the videos. Yep. You can just kind of scroll through all the book club videos and find all the, the shows that we've watched. And if you have the unlock app, follow me there and watch my, my streams. I, I talk about current shows. I just sit and chat with you guys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and the, uh, the Android version of the app is going to be coming out soon. We're almost there. So I think that's going to open up the yay. I know, finally. Uh, so many people have asked for it. Um, so it'll finally be there, and then I think the, the book club will just continue to grow, and, and I think as it gets bigger and bigger, it's going to be more and more fun. Be a nice little, little, I don't know, cult going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anime cult. Yeah, I love it. I love it. 
Um, well, you can hang out with me if you want. I'm just gonna keep taking questions and you can chime in too. Whoever's talking about board games, have you played Betrayal at House on the Hill? Yes, I have. That game is so much fun. I've been meaning to get the uh, the expansion. Uh, the Widow. Yes. yes. Oh my god. I'm a, I'm, I, I love, I, I dab a little bit in board games and stuff. It's a uh, fun pastime. Very expensive. <laughs> so. Spent a thousand dollars. Man, it's easy to do. Yeah, you forget about it. It's like, oh, twenty dollars. Buy. Yeah, what's twenty here and there? <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna just kind of start jumping around. So I'm gonna work over here and then work my way back. Yeah. Uh, this question for Mr. Yeah. I don't know, traffic's gonna be a pain. <laughs> Does anyone know the best time to avoid traffic? That's what I was gonna say. Not now. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. See, we, we live north of here, I'm from the Columbia area, so it's like coming down here, it's like, yeah, I can drive. Yeah, whatever. I don't need to take the metro, and then 4.95 later, it's like, well. <laughs> How many people are, are locals? Who's from DC? And then who who like drove in or flew in from another another spot? Okay, who thinks they're from the furthest away? Who's from a different country? I'm from Los Angeles. Different <laughs> from Maryland. Anyone? Out, out, out of the country? No, we're all Americans. All right. <laughs> hey, that's that's still pretty far. I I know um, they're probably caught up in another spot, but there's a couple folks from the UK that came in for Otakon. Uh, Rob and Edwina, and they're they're just awesome. Um, yeah, aren't they? Aren't they? Yeah, they're really great. Oh, how nice! That's a real friend. Um, I met them at a convention called SunnyCon, which is in a, a city called Newcastle in the UK. And uh, it's it's always so fun it's going to Yeah, it's Sunny SunnyCon. <laughs> it's probably cloudy like half the year. Um, but it, it, it's always cool going over to the UK because you get people from like all different places. So like there was a girl there from Italy and she was a big fan of Caesar Zeppeli. <laughs> and I just apologize profusely for butchering the accent. Um, if you guys have watched JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, I play Caesar, the Italian guy that shoots bubbles. Um, and when I got the audition, I was watching Family Guy. I'm a big fan of that show. And it was the episode where Peter pretends to be Italian. So he's like, and that's what I did in my audition. And they're like, this guy. <laughs> so she had a very authentic Italian accent. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I've been friends with Mercer and that whole Critical Role crew for a long time. I remember when they were just getting like home games together and just kind of hanging out and playing. Um, I never really was into the D and D thing, so I never went to any of the home games. Um, I, I think it would be fun to try out, um, but it's it's amazing to see what they've created. Um, and I, I love the community behind it. I love seeing all the incredible art that comes through. Um, so yeah, I mean, they got something really great going. Um, so it's, it's cool to see that, and, and I'm very interested to see what they're going to do next. Um, I've talked a little bit with the kind of owner of the franchise, um, so it's, it's interesting to see if, uh, if there's some kind of crossover that happens. Um, yeah, we're starting to get a call, right? <laughs> Okay, sure. Has anyone seen Blood Lab? Yeah. Okay, for everyone on Blood Lab, have you seen Blood Lab? No. Oh man, we gotta get that on the Anime Book Club. Um, okay, Blood Lab, uh, here's, here's my pitch, I'll pitch the show for you. Okay, Staz is this otaku vampire mob boss. Yes, the role I was born to play. <laughs> had me an Italian bubble man, but now I like it. <laughs> anime. Um, so, like, episode one, he has a, a phone with a Goku keychain on it. Like, he's such a, such an otaku. So, and he's super overpowered, so he's fighting this guy, and... Wait, he actually has powers? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. That was like a shooting or something. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. He's like, he's full-on vampire, so he has, like, super, like, like, he's super powerful. And basically, there's all these, like, pieces of the demon world, and these mob bosses are fighting to control them. 
So he controls one of the biggest regions. So he's fighting this, this one guy, and he's like, I'm gonna use a move from the most powerful fighter in the universe. Kamehameha! Oh, and he gets kicked in the face. <laughs> that is the closest I will get to saying Kamehameha. Um, I feel like that's with every Dragon Ball show. Or like, whenever they're just like, I'm gonna transform into my fifth whatever form to become the most powerful, and they sit there yelling for five minutes. Like, at any point, you just kick them in the, in the, in the balls, and they're down. And that's it. <laughs> While they're powering up for ten episodes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's when they're open. Um, Blood Lad was also a really fun show because day one, the producers came in, and they're like, so that's great. Don't even worry about that. You guys have fun with that. So we could, like, try to pitch different lines to get into the show. So, in that same battle, um, Staz elbows the guy, and the guy just goes like, pew, and goes flying, and right before he elbows him, I go, finish you. And like, it made it in the show. <laughs> so there's a lot of like, if you watch the Japanese and watch the English, the English is totally different. And it was one of those times where they're just like, make it funny. So, so it, was per it was purposefully like a, a parody. Like, like I, I'm the first one that comes to mind, I mentioned like, ghost stories, where mm -hmm. like, they with the adaptation, they were just like, let's just have fun with this. I think they had a little more fun with ghost stories. <laughs> but we definitely had a good time. We, we still had to stay somewhat true to the Japanese, but we could, like, if it was a joke that was supposed to be funny for a Japanese audience, we could make it funny for an, uh, an American audience or an English-speaking audience, you know, with a totally different joke. Okay, um, Okay, I'm going to keep jumping around. Uh, yes? I mean, how can you make me do that? <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I think, so first off, it's so difficult to get work as a voice actor. Um, it's, the, the real work is the auditioning process and trying to get the work. Um, and, and a lot of times you get cast as a character and then they die and then you're unemployed. Um, so, uh, I, I really appreciate all the work I've been able to get. Um, Here's the thing about my characters, they all become like your children, like you get really attached to them. Um, but these children, they live in my head, and they're all screaming. I don't want to make them angry. You're right, I mean, the majority of characters. <laughs> That's not false. Aaron, Kirito, Meliodas, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, all, they all speak in screaming. <laughs> Um, and again, like, work is, all work is really fun. Um, I'll give you an example of, of something else that, that hasn't been announced, um, because I recorded this on Wednesday, um, so I can't tell you what it was, um, but it, it uh, was on a movie, and it's something called Walla. Does anyone know what Walla is? The background voices. That's why we don't touch microphones. Um, <laughs> That's like the background voices. Yeah, exactly. So like, Walla cast. Like, if we're, if we're quiet for a second, it sounds like there's a convention out there. Um, but if someone was recording us, they wouldn't be able to capture that same audio in a, in a good way that would come through in the show. So they bring in voice actors to recreate what that sounds like. Um, so there was a group of 12 voice actors, and we were screaming a ton. It was really fun. Um, so I, I, I do that kind of work too, and it's, it's totally different. You might not even be able to pick me out of that crowd. Um, so one example of a, a movie I did while in was It. Have you guys seen It? Oh, yeah, the, the most recent It that just came out. Um, so I'm like a bunch of people in the town. I think I was burning alive at some point. Um, you know, it's a fun session. And then uh, we also do this stuff called Bits, uh, which is like touching up featured actors. So I got to be a part of Pennywise's voice. Um, so uh, another actor in the booth was Fred Tattashore. Do you guys know Fred? Um, he plays the Hulk. Um, so he has like this super deep, amazing voice. Like, he does these crazy creature sounds. Uh, he was doing like really deep sounds, and I was doing this like like those kind of sounds uh, at the same time. And they would blend them together, and that was part of Pennywise. Um, so, I mean, those kind of experiences happen in totally different work. Um, I, I just can't choose. Yeah, I'm really bad about trying to pick favorites. Okay, we'll go over the back. If you 
could have voiced any character in any show, who would it be? Mine would definitely be Wario. <laughs> Good choice. Is, is there new Wario stuff coming? I, I, well, I, I wonder, yeah, I was about to say Smash. Uh, oh, which, a new Warrior World actually just released, didn't it? Because, like, Robbie Damon was a background character, and, uh, yeah, there are a bunch of people that worked on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, is Wario voiced by the same guy who does Mario and Luigi? Yeah. 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 What's his name again? Charles, Charles Barnett. Barnett. Okay, I've met Charles at a number of events, and if you ever get the chance to meet him, definitely take it. He'll be signing autographs. Like, I was maybe two or three people down from him, and he was signing autographs, and then all of a sudden you just hear this, like, Mario and Luigi like jumping around. I'm like, what is going on? And it just him sitting there going, oh! You know, it's, it's so fun. Um, so, is this like a, a show that hasn't been cast yet, or this is like anything? How about both? Both. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of SpongeBob SquarePants. I would love to play a character like SpongeBob. Um, I actually met Tom Kenny also. That's a, the, the really cool thing about going to events like this, uh, is you meet the other voice actors, and you, and you meet a lot of people that don't work on the same shows as you. Um, so, uh, I met Tom Kenny in Dallas, and I was sitting in the green room, and it was me and my wife and my daughter, and my daughter was eating uh, some lunch, and she had a cucumber in her salad, and he comes up behind her and goes, Is that a sea cucumber? And I froze. I was just like, SpongeBob's talking to my daughter. <laughs> like, I kind of like pulled the fanboy in. Like, um, he, he's just such a great guy. Um, so I would love to be a part of a show like SpongeBob. Um, whether it's, you know, it was the original series or like some kind of iteration of SpongeBob in the future. That would be really cool. Um, if you could work on any show, what would you want to work on? Exactly? I'd love to be Patrick. Where's the leak, man? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good. Um, what's your favorite show? Okay, I'm going to do a couple more on this side, and then we'll jump over here. So let's go way over there, yeah. Has there ever been a situation where you saw a Japanese anime, and you saw a character, and you were like, I could voice that, and then someone actually called you up and said they want you to voice that? Yeah, it's actually happened uh, a couple times. Um, the one that really stands out uh, is in The Seven Deadly Sins. Um, I got cast as Meliodas, and I also play a second character in the show. Who's seen Seven Deadly Sins? <laughs> awesome, awesome. If you haven't seen it, I'll warn you, leave yourself a lot of time, because you'll watch one episode, and then you'll watch 24 more. Like, you'll watch all of them, and the sun will come up, and you'll be like, what have I done with my life? Um, so I got cast as Meliodas, um, and I was trying to watch ahead. It started to happen to me. I was watching ahead in Japanese and doing that thing like, oh, I'll just watch one more, I'll just watch one more. And I get to the part where there's this tournament and they're fighting for Deanne's hammer. Um, and there's a character in that tournament who's the referee and his name is Love Helm. Uh, he's like this little tiny red sheet with a mouth cut out of it with a helmet on. Uh, and he's the most annoying character in the show. <laughs> By far the most annoying character. And I heard that voice and I fell in love with, with that annoying voice. And uh, of course, like, I hear it and I try to, like, copy it. I'm like, I kind of sound like this dude. This is weird. So I, I went up to the uh, casting director after one of my recording sessions and I'm like, can I send you an audition for uh, Seven of the Sins? And she's like, you're Meliodas, what are, you, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, no, just trust me, I'll just send it in, and we'll see what happens. And she's like, I guess. So I, I go home, I practice, I record something, send it in to her. She just responds, I think we can make this work. <laughs> so um, I, I, I kept practicing that voice just in case it did work out. Um, and this was a few years back that we were recording season one. My wife was very pregnant at the time. And um, I, I was practicing and practicing, and one day she just busted in and said, If you do that voice one more time, I'm having this baby now! <laughs> so I stopped practicing at home. Um, but 
but it happened. I, I finished playing Meliodas, and then I got an email, hey, can you come in and work on Seven Deadly Sins? And went in, and it was Love Helm, and I got to talk to myself, and it was amazing. Um, Would you have been more hurt if you had to be cast as Love Helm, opposed to not being ca cast as Meliodas? <laughs> oh, like if it was backwards? Yeah. I'd much prefer being cast as Meliodas first. Um, he talks a lot more. Um, actually, three different people play Love Helm. Um, yes. Well, in, in all his iterations, without spoiling anything, it's me, Richard Epcar, and Kyle McCarley. Yeah, all in one character. Um, I'll give you a little sample of why my wife hates this character. I don't need a microphone, because I can't control the volume of my voice when I do this. Sorry, in advance. Can you see why I fell in love with that character? <laughs> um, okay, we'll do one more on this side. Let's go right there. Yeah. Um, when you're recording, what line or role was like the most awkward to do in a booth? Like after you're, you finished recording, you'd be like, what did I just say? Um, wow. Uh, that happens a lot, actually. Um, because when we go in and record these things, especially the anime, you don't get the script ahead of time. Most of the time, you've never seen the show, and you don't know what character you're playing. So you're like, you know, Guy C in episode 35. So there's no way of preparing, and there's no way of really, truly understanding the entire story. Um, I, I worked on Digimon, and uh, I, I played these, like, weird little knight things, and there's, like, ten of them. And I did all ten of them. <laughs> so, so they're like, and then it plays it back and they're like, ah! all together. Um, and I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> it's so weird. There, there was a similar question last night at the, uh, the Voice Actors After Dark panel, um, where someone asked, it was like, uh, are there any roles that you've done, like, that you've done in the past that, looking back, you're like, I can't believe I did that, or I can't believe I was that role, or like... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that happens too, because you don't really know what you're working on. I think some of my earlier work, when I was a teenager, might have not have been the best shows. Um, but I look back really fondly because that was my training. Um, I wasn't formally trained as a voice actor. Uh, I really learned on the job, and I learned from teaching martial arts and just yelling at kids and then yelling at their parents. Um, that's that's kind of how I learned to be a voice actor. So I, I kind of whole things from my life in a different way than people that are formally trained. Um, so yeah, there's definitely interesting things that happen. I, I don't really get embarrassed. I actually love it. Like, I just think it's funny when I have to do weird things in the booth. Um, so yeah, yeah, one, one doesn't really stand out as like the worst moment. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump over here. Let's, let's start here and kind of work my way back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Any Miraculous fans here? <laughs> awesome. Have you watched Miraculous Lady? You've seen bits and pieces. Because, like, again, you are going to love this show. And I, I'm going to yeah. check it out now. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Like, it's, it really reminds me of Sailor Moon. Because, like, every episode, there has to be a transformation. There's someone from the city that turns into the bad guy. Um, yeah, it's so you're like to the, utilize them. You know, the Tuxedo Mask version? Or the parallel, I guess? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, would you compare Cat Noir to Tuxedo Mask? I mean, I think he's not... No, you're like, no. 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 Yeah. <laughs> he's slightly more useful. My business here is done. Yeah. He can do anything. <laughs> Wait a second. Um, okay, you ready? Plaid Plaza! And then he goes, boop, 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 and turns into Cat Noir. Um, yeah, I do that pretty much every episode. And then he also has a special move. Uh, all, all his moves are cat puns. Um, <laughs> called Cataclysm! And then he hits something and kind of like evaporates. It's just like gone. It disintegrates. Yes, thank you. Um, but it's fun. Yeah, I recommend you check it out. So you're like a, you're, you're, you're a cat that can like, you're a cat person that can just disintegrate things? Like, well, okay. He's just a teenager. Like, okay. like in, his, in his normal life, he's a, he's he's a supermodel. Okay. Um, and then he. <laughs> And then he transforms into Cat Noir to save Paris okay. and help uh, the, the lead female played by Christina V. Um, uh, to parfaitse? Like, uh, does he speak French at all? 
Uh, not well. Because <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and I don't speak French well. It's actually a French job. So, yeah, which is interesting because um, we're adapting from French as the original language, and French is a lot closer to English than Japanese. So it's actually a little simpler, like the flaps are a little bit closer. And the word puns and all that stuff are easier to adapt. Well, to some extent. <laughs> in France, there aren't as many cat puns in the show, and that's because I rewrite the lines, and Ezra Weiss rewrites the, rewrites the lines to make it as punny as possible. Just because we like the cat puns. Doing the Lord's work. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep working our way back. Did you have a question? Uh, what's the difference between dubbing from something in Japanese and French and Oh, sure. Yeah, actually, um, I'll, I'll talk a little more about that. Um, there's something really interesting that we use uh, working on Miraculous called the Rhythmo Band. And what that is, it's like this big box at the bottom of the screen, and there's a, a line, and all of the script is on this fan, and it kind of like slides over. And when it hits the line, you're supposed to say your line. So it's like dubbing karaoke. So, so it's not like the, the, the one, two, three, go? You still get leaps. That, that like gives you the initial start to when the scene starts, but we'll run like an entire scene, versus like in anime, you typically go one line at a time. Oh, is that is that so they can like so the flaps match up better? It's just a different style, and it's something that was popular in uh, Europe, and it's kind of found its way over to. I mean, really, it only happens at this one studio that does a lot of French dubbing, um, and that's where we record Miraculous. So it's it's interesting. It's a different challenge. Um, it's it's fun. I, I think it turns out it turns out really great. You can't even tell sometimes that it's a dub. Um, yes? So, going back to Sword Art Online Bridge. Sure! If you, if you remember when you were here like three years ago, yeah. I had to read out a line from Kirito. I do remember that. Yeah. So I have another line. Okay. <laughs> have you seen SAO Bridge? I have not. Okay, you're in the same boat as me. Actually, this is another show featuring another character in your voice called Daniel Rampo Bridge Thing. Oh, yes, nice! <laughs> a Bridge Thing! <laughs> That's a lovely title. <laughs> yes. Has anyone seen uh, Rumpa? Awesome. Awesome. It's Danganronpa Bridge Thing Draft for short. Okay. So here, I have a line from Maggie. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> we'll find out in a second. So. I love the implication that it's its own language. <laughs> You know who's really good at this is Chris Bevins, who voices uh, Japan in um, oh in Italia. He's really good at this. Um, I'm probably not going to do very well. He does. Yes, yes, he does. Yeah, I like his Hagakure. Sure. Pronounce it like it's spelled. This is going to go very poorly. I'm, I'm imitating Sayaka, if you guys didn't know. Um, and it as Nagi, right? Nagi kind of sounds like this. Kanichiwa! I tried to kill a man, guess who? Sumimasen I have no idea what that means. So, there you are. Thanks for that. Now I'm... See, I need to watch more, more uh, doves and subs. There we go, nice. <laughs> uh, yes, we'll go back here, go like one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. I had a question, like, how competitive is it? Because I know you do a lot of main character roles such as Rin, Kirito, and Aaron. Like, how competitive is that? Because I remember back when I was um, starting watching anime, there was a lot of dubs to me, so I'd always watch those first. Yeah. And then, like, I was always seeing your voice. I was like, did they just get you because you're really good at doing main characters? Or like, <laughs> so, the, the interesting thing is, um, so I think this is why uh, my voice hasn't changed since middle school. Um, so, so, I sound, I still sound like I'm that age. Um, but actually, a lot of those roles are all cast by different people, um, and I auditioned for all of them. Um, and it's extremely competitive. Like, if you book one out of a hundred auditions, you're doing really, really well. Um, and to hit like characters like Kito 
And like Aaron Yeager, that was the first audition I had for Funimation. It was the very first submission I sent to them, uh, and I was cast in Attack on Titan. Um, so I, I feel like I've just won the anime lottery like time and time again. Um, if I knew the secret of how it happened, I would be booking a lot more than I, than I have. Um, I'm just guessing. I'm just, you know, I, I, what I do is I, I step into the booth, I look at the character, sometimes they give you a description, sometimes they give you a sample of the Japanese voice, um, and I just go with my gut. I go with what I think this character would sound like and just kind of create a new character. Um, and sometimes the casting director feels like the character should sound like that. Like, that's, oh, that's it. They just know. Um, and, and I feel like I've just kind of gotten lucky with a lot of these roles. Um, I've just landed the right ones. Um, no rhyme or reason, um, it's just worked out. And I'm just grateful it has. Um, so, so I know you mentioned a lot of like listening to like, like uh, examples or like, like hearing the Japanese voice actor or wherever you're coming from. Like, yeah, do you, I know a lot of like VAs of course have experience with like, like uh, theater in high school or, or beyond. Um, do you? Do many VAs have like experience with a choir or like ear training, singing, like I don't know, being able to match pitches or like is that a common thing? Like that's yeah. I mean, like when you when you talk to different VAs, you'll see it's like a really mixed bag. So like everyone has these different talents, and you don't really know like where people had come from. I know uh, I'm friends with Sean Schimmel who plays Goku, uh, and he's like an avid French horn player. Um, so he's he's very into sound and audio gear also. So I think like for him, there's certain things like he could break down a sound in a very unique and interesting way. Um, it, it's not like that for me. Like I, I don't, I, I do have sort of like patterns very well, like because of the martial arts. Um, and I also played the drums for a little while in middle school. Um, so like I can do patterns very well. Um, and because I, I've, worked in dubbing specifically for so long, like, there's a cadence that comes with anime, um, so I, I feel like I'm very good at hitting sync. Because, um, of course, voice actors can be using your, your voice, that's a very important tool, but, like, I'm guessing, like, sort of your ears are also, I have to imagine, are very, like, essential to, like... Yeah, yeah, I mean, especially when, like, um, so, so as we're dubbing, my goal isn't to just emulate what the Japanese say you did. Like, I don't want to just copy them. I want to find what's in their performance that's interesting and special, and I want to be inspired by that to create a new performance. So it's like, you're in this box, you're trying to stay true to the original story and to the, the Japanese, but you don't want to just copy them, because a lot of times it just doesn't sound right. You make the character your own. Exactly, exactly. So uh, I take a lot of inspiration from the, the Japanese actors, but I, I never try to just do exactly that. Um, okay, we'll keep bouncing around, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you still also voice characters in video games? Do you have your, do you still play any uh, voice in? Um, I, uh... Really I, like, Fire Emblem and been like, I'm gonna use the characters that I voice. <laughs> Just the entire Squinty Eye squad? Um, <laughs> I, I haven't picked up Fire Emblem. I'm a little nervous about those games because they're really addicting, and I feel like I would fall right into that. But I have picked up Mobius Final Fantasy. Has anyone played Mobius? A couple people? Okay. Um, highly recommend you check this out. Uh, it's a Square Enix game. Um, I play the Warrior of Light, or the character that you play as. Um, I get to use my man voice, which is really fun. Um, and I've been working on this game for over three years. Uh, the like icon of the app is the infinity symbol. Um, I think it has the potential to go on forever. Um, I'm like, come on, come on, come on. It's uh, it's nice to have a little bit of job security. Um, but I, I was playing it quite a bit. Like I started getting hooked. Like my character was really getting strong. They also have like crossovers from other games. So I had like the Zidane card and like the Zidane costume and all that. And then I got a new phone and didn't get my character back. So I've started it over again and started playing through. Um, so yeah, that's the one game I'm playing right now. Um, yes. Going back to Attack on Titan, since, sure. since we know that you are a martial arts instructor, during the Titan fights, were there any times where you were 
like feeling frustrated when he was fighting, uh, Baron was fighting against Annie, because I think they both fight using Muay Thai. Yeah, actually, what I love about the series is that there's authentic martial arts in the show. So, um, I used to do a, a Muay Thai panel at conventions, and I had the clip of Annie and Aaron fighting where Annie kicks him in the head and his head flies off. Um, spoiler. Um, and it's a perfect Muay Thai head kick. Um, in season two, it looks like Aaron's been taking some Brazilian jiu-jitsu, um, because I actually train a little bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu also. I'm very much a white belt. Um, for quite a while, I was getting up super early in the morning before, like, before the sun came up. Uh, I'd meet up with Johnny Young Bosch, who's here this weekend. Um, <laughs> we would drive into the studio, Johnny would choke me out a bunch, uh, and then we'd start our day. It was really fun. Um, so Johnny has, has actually been carrying on and, and training quite a bit. Like, his jiu-jitsu has gotten really good. Um, but in season two, um, in the big fight with Reiner, um, uh, Aaron does some legit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Like, he pulls a guillotine, he, like, pulls a triangle, he transitions to an arm bar, and, like, it's legit. And I was like, I just did that! Johnny just caught me with that one! Um, Not only animes have, like, uh, obscene, like, names for their attacks, like, the guillotine, like... <laughs> no, no, there are, there are a lot of that, a lot of those things. Um, that, that's one was like, it almost was like dancing. Oh, uh, no, that's Capoeira. Oh, that's Capoeira. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it's not pretty to watch. Um, it's, it's submission grappling, so there's no striking. And really the goal is to get your opponent to tap. And when you tap, it means, like, I'm dead. So, like, either, like, if I don't tap, I'm gonna get choked out, or if I don't tap, my arm's gonna get broken. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Um, it's really, really uh, exhausting because you're like struggling and just like you, you can't strike, so it's all wrestling. Um, but yeah, it's it's like playing chess and uh, I only have a pawn when I play. <laughs> so it's a lot of me getting choked out. Um, okay, keep going over. Yes? Sure, um, and I'm, I'm sure you sat in on panels, so like the advice that I'll give is something totally different from other people, because there's not one way to become a voice actor. Um, I think it's really important to become an actor, to kind of hone in on your craft, because um, sometimes you don't get uh, more than one opportunity, and you have to really nail the audition the first time you go. Um, also, things like putting together a great voice demo, getting a great voice agent, um, just getting as much experience as you can, um, and then I, I wish I knew how to book a job. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally shooting darts at a dartboard blindfolded. Like, it's that crazy. Um, if you're really committed, there's a website, it's just called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. Yep. I highly recommend it. I forget who actually produced it. D. Bradley Baker, yeah. There you go. Legend. It's, yeah. If, if you're curious, there's, there's lots of, there, there are plenty, plenty of articles and exercises and just kind of everything that Bryce just said. Sort of just like an instructor that, yeah, like acting. And like, if, if you, the thing that I've learned <laughs> from making these videos over a year and stuff is record yourself, kind of listen to your voice, and like, it's, I don't know, like, like pick, out, pick out different scripts, pick out like uh, lines from, from movies and try to, to recreate it or to get that character and slightly twist it. it it's uh, definitely recording yourself and getting used to how you sound and how you want to sound. Yeah. <laughs> and just doing it over and over and over again. Yeah, and also having other people listen to your practice, like listen to your recordings, because like you don't sound exactly the same to yourself as someone else is hearing you, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good to do that. There's also other resources like Yuri and Tara Lowenthal have a great book, um, and I know Steve Bloom has some online classes. Steve's amazing, um, and he has some online classes. Yeah, Steve Bloom. Um, he has some classes that he's doing, so you should check those out too. Um, yes. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, actually, I, I, I said, I put it out there, like, 
I would love to see someone cosplay as Love Helm. And I went to a con, and these guys made the perfect Love Helm. It was like they, uh, they had an umbrella, and they like painted the umbrella like the helmet, and then draped this red thing over it, and it, it was so perfect. Um, I did actually cosplay as one of my characters. Um, I uh, was part of this event called the, the Cosplay Ball, and um, my buddy Dante Bosco, uh, you might know as Rufio, um, yeah, Dante, um, he, uh, he, he totally knows the like Hollywood club scene, like Dante's just cool, he just knows everybody. Um, and we're like, wouldn't it be awesome if we like took over this club, but it was just like a cosplay party, like away from all conventions, and you could just go and, and have fun in cosplay. And, we're like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So we did it. We got this club. We threw the, the, the cosplay ball, and of course I had to cosplay. So uh, I had just been announced as Aaron. Um, so a couple people helped me put together an Aaron cosplay. Um, and they, they had this wig. Have you ever worn a wig before? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so they had this wig. They put it on my head. You might notice that like I have a helmet that travels with me everywhere. My, my hair full of hair gel. Um, so they put this wig on me, and I was like, uh, oh, it fell off, and that was it. Like, that was as long as I could wear it. Uh, it was maybe two seconds. Um, but for the rest of the night, I cosplayed as Aaron without a wig. Um, but yeah, it was super fun, super fun. It, it just made me respect cosplayers even more. I've dabbled myself. <laughs> what have you done? What have you cosplayed? It was I didn't do anything this year, but last year uh, I didn't voice him. Uh, but I cosplayed as a Kose from your line April. Uh, favorite characters. Nice. I, I don't have the black hair, so I got like a black wig, and I can only tolerate it for like an hour or so. It's just wig, wigs are not comfortable. <laughs> yeah, they're they're not my friend. Um, all right, I'll keep jumping around. Let's go over here. Yeah. Very prepared. I like it. We have the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so, who has seen Mother Rosar Mother's Rosario? Cool. So, um, I, I thought just the story was really beautiful. I mean, first off, uh, what I didn't like is that I didn't talk very much. Um, but I, I did show up. He was there enough to remind you, like, Kirita's still here. Um, you just come in and beat somebody up and then be like, I'd right, see you. Um, so uh, I, I thought the story was beautiful. Um, I also thought, uh, you know, Sherry's and Erica's performances were incredible. Um, yeah, give them a hand for that. I mean, so uh, I'll give you a, a quick story about my experience on that. I, I walk into the booth to record my maybe five lines as Kirito um, in this one session, and there's a chair in the booth that's leaning all the way back, like, like someone was in this chair, like, like all the way back. And I'm like, why don't I get to work like that? Who was in here before me? Um, and it was Erica Mendes. And uh, without spoiling what happens, um, her character is very weak at a certain point, and Alex Von David, the, the voice director, wanted her to actually sound like she was laying down and, and weak and suffering. And she performed a lot of the scenes like laying down. Um, and I thought that was just so interesting. I've never seen that before. Um, and when you listen to it, you can tell like, like this actress is laying down. Um, so so I, I just, I love the performances. I thought, you know, it was, it was a great opportunity for Sherry and Erica to shine and they, they really killed it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the characters too. Like, Yuki's a great character. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was it was just a, great, a really good arc. Did, what did you did you see it? Yeah, so I haven't seen that season yet. <laughs> ah, you'll have to watch. I was about to say uh, season three is coming out. What like this fall? Yeah, they just announced um, this weekend. Like as I landed here, there was a, a announcement that September fifteenth they're showing the hour long first episode in Los Angeles. So I'm definitely going to that. Um, Maybe you'll have to watch that in the book club. Maybe that will they'll get the uh, Attack on Titan treatment where we just watch all of it. There you go. More. There you go. Yeah, it's one of those shows that like you could binge it. Um, 
you'd have some work to do. You might have to break it up into seasons, but yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. I'd be a guest if you, <laughs> maybe I'll step in. Um, okay, yes, let's go over here. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, um, yeah. So during the action scenes in Attack on Titan, like, how, how physically were you in your role? I guess it was when you would buy some, like, stuff like that. Yeah, so, um, I take the, the physicality really seriously. Um, so like in season one, I bit my hand so hard that I left bruises. Um, but it sounds so good! Um, in season, I, yeah, I literally bit my hand. Oh, and like, my hand was like super bruised after because uh, I was biting it so hard because he's sitting there like biting through his flesh. Did he just give you like a, I don't know, like a plushie or something if I had to? Like, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, I feel like you can substitute your own hand with like a prop or something. You could. I, like, I, I've definitely had uh, moments where characters are eating and then like, I'll, I'll eat something, I'll have some food in my mouth so it sounds real. Um, but like, biting a prop wouldn't get the same result because there's genuine pain that you feel. Like, it's, it's an authentic, like, reaction. It hurts. And it sounds like it hurts. Um, which is awesome, which is what the show needed. Um, yeah, in season two, uh, I took it another step further. Um, so Aaron, in this one moment, uh, is... Uh, just more detached than ever before. And, and what I did to sound even more insane is I dislocated my jaw. Um, so I'd like to pull my jaw off to the side. Um, the problem with that is I bit my tongue. Um, but then Aaron was like spitting blood in the next moment, so it sounded so authentic um, because I was bleeding. Um, but it sounds amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm a little nervous uh, uh, for what I'm going to have to put myself through in the upcoming seasons. Um, All right, Chris, when you shoot in the foot, then you go in the booth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'd listen back and be like, wow, it sounds like you really got shot in the foot. Um, you know, there's, it, it's, it's tough to fake that kind of intensity. Um, so all the screams and all of that stuff, like I'm screaming full blast. Um, yeah, it, it, I felt like a metal singer for a lot of the series. Uh, also because Mike McFarlane, like in, in season one, uh, we recorded batches of episodes. So I would fly out to Dallas, uh, I stayed with Mike McFarlane, uh, the director, we drive into the studio, Mike listens to metal, so it'd be like 30 minutes of like, rah, 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 and then followed by like eight hours of me like, rah, 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 rah. Um, so yeah, I, I really did feel like a metal singer. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Mike is a great director. It's it's really fun working with him. Also, uh, I grew up as a, a huge fan of Dragon Ball Z, so I'm just like, I'm being directed by Master Roshi, um, which is really cool. Um, how much time do we have? I'm not supposed to talk anymore. See, I do this all the time, and unless someone's like, stop talking, uh, I keep talking. Um, so thank you, Graham, for joining me up here. This is really cool, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. Um, Otacon has really been a great show. Um, if I didn't get to answer your question, I'm so sorry. I, I am going to sneak back to my booth for about an hour before I jump on my flight. So try to meet as many people as I can. Um, and uh, if I didn't answer your question, Download the Unlocked app and ask me when I go live. I'm, I'm happy to chat with you guys there too. Or um, tell them to bring me back. I'd love to come back and hang out again, guys. Thank you so much.